Welcome back to the series on searching and sorting. In this part, we'll cover how to search and sort data in practice. In general, you don't roll your own searching and sorting algorithms or implementations. Instead, you use standard library functions built into the programming language or framework that you're using. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. But we don't want dozens of different functions, one for each type of variable on each type of criteria that we may want to search or sort on. We want one generic solution that can sort any type of data by any criteria. We want one sorting function to rule them all. The solution is to use one generic sorting function that implements, say, quicksort or some other fast sorting algorithm. It performs all the basic operations like swapping elements, partitioning, and recursing. However, it does so without regard to the type of elements that it's sorting. But the algorithm does need to know how to order elements, say elements A and B. Given these two elements to compare, are they in order, out of order, or are they equal? In other words, do they need to be swapped? To accomplish this, we need something called a comparator function. A comparator function is simple. It takes two elements A and B, and it returns some negative integer value if A comes before B. It returns zero if A is equivalent to B, and it returns a positive integer value if A comes after B. In this way, a comparator is able to communicate the relative ordering of any two elements. Here's the idea illustrated. The generic sorting algorithm takes an array as input and outputs a sorted array. However, at some point, it needs to determine if two elements A and B should be swapped or partitioned in a certain way. At that point, it passes A and B off to the comparator function and uses the return value to determine whether or not A and B should be swapped. This setup makes it so that the sorting algorithm doesn't need to know anything about the elements stored in the array. It just needs to know how to sort. Only the comparator function needs to know about the type of data that A and B represent in order to provide an ordering to the sorting algorithm. This makes it so that we don't have to rewrite the sorting algorithm over and over and over again. We only need to make a new comparator function for each type of data or each criteria that we want to search and sort by. In C, this is achieved through a comparator function. Comparators have the following signature. It returns an integer value and takes two generic elements A and B. The const ensures that we won't be making any changes to A and B, we'll only read them to compare them. Void star is a generic void pointer that can point to anything. Recall that you've actually seen this before when we used malloc. There are not separate implementations of malloc for integers or doubles or chars. There's only one generic implementation that returns a generic void star pointer. There is a simple standard pattern to follow when writing comparators. The first step is to cast the generic void pointers to a particular type of data that you're comparing. You then use the data's state and value of its variables to determine the proper order. And you return an integer value, something negative, positive, or zero that expresses the proper order of the elements. We'll develop several examples here in a moment but let's keep in mind best practices as we do so. We'll want to use descriptive names for our functions that indicate what they're comparing and how. We'll want to be explicit in our comparisons. And we'll want to avoid temptations to use certain tricks that may have many pitfalls. Whenever possible, we'll reuse our comparator functionality. To demonstrate these ideas, let's write several comparator functions. We'll write a comparator function to order integers in non-decreasing order. We'll write a comparator to order integers in non-increasing order, in the reverse order. Then we'll write three comparators for students. Recall that we developed a student structure in a previous video series. We'll go ahead and order student structures by their NUIDs, their GPAs, and then by their last names and first names. If two students have the same last name, then we'll look at their first names to determine the ordering. Now to start out, we're going to write that comparator to order integers in non-decreasing order. Non-decreasing can be thought of as increasing. Technically, we have to use non-decreasing because we could have elements that are equal. A sequence 10, 10, 10 does not increase but it doesn't decrease either. Remember that it has to return an integer, 
and I'll call it CMP int ASC, short for compare integer ascending. Now, if you want to compare integers, we might be tempted to do the following, which takes two integer values, which are passed by value. This is not a comparator function. Remember that a comparator function takes const void star pointers. This is also wrong. This is not a comparator function. A comparator function has to be generic. This is not generic. This is specific. It only applies to two integers. It's only a comparator when we have the following signature. They both have to be const void star pointers. The first thing that we need to do is transform these into integers inside the function so that we can actually look at their values and treat them as integers. This is an explicit typecast. We're taking the void pointer and forcing it to become an integer pointer so that we can now treat it as an integer and make a comparison. We'll do the same thing with B. Now I've got pointers X and Y, which are expected to point to two 32-bit twos complement signed integers. Now, if somebody were to call this function and pass in something that was not an integer, then it would definitely lead to some unexpected results, maybe even a segmentation fault. But that's not our problem, that's their problem. We documented in our comment that A and B are expected to be integers. If somebody doesn't follow that documentation, that's on them. Now, if the value stored in X is less than the value stored in Y, then they're in order. So we return something negative. In general, we can return whatever we want. The magnitude may or may not be important. We could return negative 10 here, but it's just as simple to return negative one. Otherwise, if the value stored in X exceeds the value stored in Y, then they're out of order, so we need to return something positive. The only other case is if they're equal, in which case we return zero. Now let's write the opposite function, a comparator that orders integers in descending order or non-increasing order. It has the exact same pattern. The only thing that we need to do is change our logic. If the value stored in X is greater than Y, then we return something negative. Otherwise, if the value stored in X is less than Y, then we return something positive. Hopefully this is screaming out to you. That was a lot of copy pasta. We already have essentially the same functionality here in this other function. Why don't we reuse that? One way that we can do that is by calling that function. But we need to reverse the values. If cmp int asc returns something negative, we want to convert that into something positive. If it returns something positive, we want to convert that to negative. And if it returns zero, then we're in agreement with that. All I need to do then is multiply it by negative one to do that. An even easier trick is to reverse my arguments. And now I don't have any repeated code. Now let's write that first comparator for students where they compare them by their NUID. To be absolutely clear about what this comparator is doing, we'll go ahead and name it appropriately. We're comparing student structures by their NUID.
In order to conform with the expectations of a comparator function, we still have to pass in const void star parameters. But inside the function, instead of casting them to integers, we'll cast them to students. We now have two instances of students, x and y. Because they're pointers, we can access their variables using the arrow operator. Recall that the NUID is an integer value. So we can use the same basic logic from before. Again, this looks suspiciously familiar. We already have a comparator that compares integers. Why don't we use it? And we can avoid repeated code. We still have a problem here. The NUIDs of both of these objects, it's going to be a regular old integer. But CMP in ascending requires pointers. So we need to convert each one of these into a pointer. I do that by using the ampersand. Now you do need to be careful here. Which one of these operators, the ampersand or the arrow operator, have a higher order of precedence? It turns out that it's the arrow operator, and so we're okay with this, but you may want to be more explicit in your actual code. So you don't have to remember such minute details. Now let's go ahead and write a comparator for students that orders them by GPA in descending order so that 4.0s appear before 3.0s. Remember, if x's GPA is less, it goes after y. So we return 1 in that first case. If x has a greater GPA, then it comes before y, and so we return negative 1 in that case. Finally, let's write a comparator to order student structures by their last name, and then if they have the same last name, we'll go ahead and compare their first name. Now, how do we compare their last name? Their last name is a string, so I need to compare two strings. Recall that we already have something to do that, strcmp. strcmp is not a comparator function. It explicitly takes two char star pointers instead of void pointers, but it still has the same contract of a comparator in that it returns something negative, positive, or zero, depending on the relative ordering of its elements. So let's go ahead and use it to compare the last name. Now, if the last names are different, say Hopper and Turing, then strcmp is going to return a positive or negative value, in which case we've already determined the relative ordering of them. Hopper comes before Turing. In that case, we can immediately return R. Otherwise, if R is zero, then they have the same last name. And so we then need to compare their first name. Only in the case when R is zero and they have the same last name, do we then need to look at the first name.
Now, if it turns out that they both have the same first and last name, say we've got two Grace Hoppers here, then it would end up returning zero with no further distinction or tie breaking. If we wanted that functionality to break ties, then we would have to add more logic and break ties along a parameter that we know to be unique, say like their NUID. Now we still need to test all of this stuff, but to do so, we need to first introduce function pointers and how to use the built-in searching and sorting capabilities provided by the C standard library.